I'm Shane. I'm Kelsey. And, and this is Dixie. Dixie. And we're Love Hut for Life. We have been traveling around the country helping other people build their tiny homes on wheels. And Shane has been working really hard on this bus behind us. We've been calling it the Valdez bus. And this is Carlos and Lorena. I think they're about to give us a tour, guys. Here, guys. Come on in. Let's go. Before we go inside, let's point out a couple things that makes this bus really unique. The most unique thing is it ain't going anywhere. And because of that, we were able to use a steel door, which you normally don't get to because you need DOT glass coming down so that you can actually see where you're going. Another thing we did was we stabilized this bus. If you notice, there's pilings up front as well as ones in the back. What this does is it takes the suspension and relieves it. So the bus is completely level. It doesn't bounce, it doesn't rock. And the pad that this bus is sitting on, we've actually, I'll show you from back here. We've actually brought it up from the rest of the property. This is a floodplain that we're in, so it can get rather muddy and wet here, particularly during hurricane season. Also what makes this bus unique is it has a window unit. What I did was I connected the window unit to a 120 or 110 plug here. This is our 50 amp connection for the rest of the electrical appliances. I wanted the air conditioner to be running independently just to help with the amp allowance. We only have 50 amps in this bus and with a stove or refrigerator lights and an electric water heater, we were running out of amps to play with. The sewer system is also unique because normally buses don't have one quite like this. I plumb this just like a house. So that goes straight up to the toilet. This is our vent here. The drain line continues on for the bathroom sink as well as the kitchen sink. And there's a clean out at the end. The shower runs behind the tire and comes up into the shower back here. The last thing out here is we still have a fuse panel, but it's a residential one where the bus one used to be. I thought this is a really good spot to access it and we didn't lose any wall space trying to run a breaker box inside. You'll come inside and see the rest of it with me. This when you walk in is the stained wood and the tongue and groove. It was something I really wanted to start at the beginning and carry all the way through the bus. Also something you notice is something unique. This little shelf is actually built to be a general store. There's a very young lady that had her heart set on having a general store to play with in this bus. I also built it so that in the future when she grows out of that idea, we can use it for storage for other things. Um, Another thing that's very unique about this bus is there's no steering wheel. There's no driver's seat. I removed the dashboard, the console, everything. And because of that, we gained a lot of square footage, which is rather important because this isn't a full-size bus. It's more of a mid-size. So gaining that extra square footage was really key, in my opinion. Um, I did some space-saving things like installing a countertop that pulls up so that you have a nice L shape to work on up here. Another thing I did in the kitchen was if you noticed earlier, the breaker box is on the underside of this, this uh, cabinet and you really can't see it from in here. I built it in, but back behind the plumbing is an access so that if you were to have to run more wires into your breaker box, that's still obtainable. I also did full electric for the kitchen as well. So we do have a fully functioning stove. It is slightly smaller than a normal one, but it does have four burners as well as an oven, which is more than sufficient for the needs of this bus. Um, we didn't go with a garbage disposal though. <laughs> we also ran a GFI plug in the kitchen as well. And there's one in the bathroom. This is the only plug for the actual kitchen. So if you're running a coffee pot or any other small appliance that will route through this, all the lights in here are dimmable as well we use led lights like i normally do in a bus but generally those are 12 volt lights these had to run through the 110 wiring so they have a step down inside that brings them down and lets the the led lights work off of the full power so i didn't have to install any sort of electronics to run 12 volt power through this bus we also put in a 110 uh, refrigerator as well. It's slightly shorter because we just didn't need a full-size refrigerator and because of that we were able to gain a lot of storage around the top. Even up above the top of the window there's storage for small things like glassware or art or whatever you would like to stick in that pocket. I really tried to take advantage of every square inch of this space. 
The other thing I want to point out about the front of the bus is this couch bench area. Normally this is where I would stick the batteries and inverters and all the electronics. It's a really good place is to hide them under the couch and that's where most people tend to hide them. But we don't have those in this bus because I put the breaker box outside so we have a nice dead space that you can store blankets and whatever else. This bus is not going to be lived in full time so the idea of packing in things for winter and summer into here is actually kind of ideal. Let's check out the bathroom. Great, so I'm hanging out here in our little tiny bathroom. I had to have this cute little sink in here so we could wash our hands. But you'll see some of my other favorite stuff is up here where you can actually see some of these doors that Shane created. I will say Shane's work has been impeccable. Attention to detail has been awesome. Shane and Kelsey have been so helpful giving us ideas of what we can do to build out our tiny home and to make it as efficient as possible. As I said earlier, it was really important that this bus is never going to move. So I wanted to build in as much accessibility to all of the different components that I put in. Generally with a moving bus, we don't put as much wall coverings and, and permanent structures inside. We, we leave the ability to maintain our plumbing and electrical, but I wanted it hidden in this one, just like a normal house. Um, the idea that the small on-demand electric water heater may never go out or there won't be a leak somewhere in the plumbing system is not really realistic for mobile or stationary applications. There's always something that happens. So instead of having to destroy everything I've built to maintain any of that, I built it where it's rather easily accessible. This cabinet being one of the things, with the removal of four screws, this whole cabinet comes out. And once it comes out, these bottom plates of it come out, as well as this back wall behind the toilet. So you can access the entire plumbing system that I have routed between the shower and the bathroom, as well as this entire wall on the side of the bathroom, it comes out. And you can easily remove these single tongue and grooves down at the bottom and that allows you access to the rest of the plumbing all the way down to the kitchen sink as well as the electrical that runs through there it's a bit of a tight squeeze but we viewed it as definitely a necessity i built these beds as small as i possibly could usually a twin bed is 38 inches this one's 36 inches um it was important to be able to sleep two adults in these bunk beds they are built for two children to be staying here, but friends and family are gonna be coming down as well. And the ability to house those adults is rather important. Um, it's also important that I put two electrical outlets in the bed so you can charge your electronic devices, as well as I put window boxes in the top and bottom bunk. So it allows natural lighting in both spaces, particularly with the bottom one, it could be really dark down there and I wasn't wanting that effect. Everything in this bus is very open and bright. I didn't want any spot to be dark. Um, as far as the master bed in the back, it is a full-size queen. So we didn't have to cut anything off of it. Normally in a bus, we build a garage underneath the bed. So it makes the bed a quite awkward height. And usually you have to have some little footstool or something to get up onto it. We were able to build this one like a residential one because the only real purpose for the underside storage would be to put luggage or anything that you're temporarily storing while you're staying here. So there's no need to be able to shove tools and bicycles and everything else underneath it. We did window deletes around the air conditioner as well as moving forward towards the bathroom. I didn't want glass behind the shower walls because obviously you're never going to be able to access that. Um, this AC unit also features heat and it all runs through a 110 plug that goes outside. When it's under its heating mode, it can generate and pull a lot of amps. So that could really decrease the ability to use appliances inside. So it was important to be able to plug it in directly to the post instead of running it through the rest of the system. There's also a secondary plug down there that if this heat does not heat up the space completely because we can't really test it, but it's really hot in Texas right now, um, you'll be able to install a secondary wall heater down there below. I don't foresee that being an issue, but I always like to prepare for the future So we went with subway tile in the shower and generally when you run subway tile you run a really small grout line in between them. I wanted to bring it out and expand it a little more because it reminded me of all the old tile work that I saw in the farmhouses where I grew up. 
So that's what I replicated with this one. Also, I kept the original ceiling that we ran all the way through the bus. I sealed it over and over again, as well as sealed around all the perimeters of it. We utilized a residential 32 inch shower pan because usually in a bus, we tend to squeeze the showers in as small of a space as we possibly can. And sometimes that really limits your um, ability to move around inside. And it was important to actually be able to use the shower. So we had the space and we did it. We also plumbed in just a removable shower head instead of a mounted one because being able to stand under it is pretty much unrealistic without doing roof raise on the bus. So we weren't doing that, so we had to plan accordingly. All right, hey y'all, my part of the tour. Just wanna to let y'all know, some of my favorite aspects of this has been a modern farmhouse build. Uh, the attention to detail is probably one of the most amazing things. Whether we're looking at this tiny roof ceiling that was stained, contrasted by you know a, a pure white, and then looking at this kitchen, um, we were able to do some modern things. You know, we were able to actually use a butcher block, a recessed uh, stainless steel sink, uh, and some you know modern modern appliances. So uh, it really came together. But the uh, the farmhouse look stayed true with these amazing custom doors. Uh, this amazing bench over here and um, you know we even uh, were able to do something for the children a little general store we're gonna build for them and uh, kind of just keeps them engaged uh, out here on, on the land of the property and love hut for life uh, amazing two individuals that help run that and travel travel the country helping out uh, individuals um, you know with their needs and so we really appreciate their hospitality out here holding space for the land it has been amazing guys oh my god this place has turned out to be absolutely incredible and I have to say I am really proud of our builder here mm. now guys I occasionally will provide a helping hand maybe hold something to make uh, the process go a little bit faster but for the most part I'm just behind the camera and Shane is a one-man show all of this is completely 100% his work and uh, I think that he's done an incredible job. Well, thank you, ma'am. Now guys, I do wanna take the time to say thank you to all of you who have been watching us throughout this build and throughout all of our adventures so far. If you haven't already done so, be sure and hit that subscribe button. I also want to take the time to say thank you to the Valdez family for being absolutely amazing hosts. I gotta say, we could not have asked for any better of a situation to be working in, and we are incredibly grateful to the entire Valdez family. On the note of our channel and our past videos, if this is the first video of ours you've watched, go ahead and go back and look at the Valdez playlist. Every day of this build has been recorded for your viewing pleasure. If you're looking for my help making your tiny living dream come true, shoot me an email at lovehubforlife at gmail.com or you can direct message us on Facebook and Instagram. Guys, once again, this has just been an absolutely amazing experience. We are so grateful for all of you and hope to see all of your comments below. We'll see you next week. Peace out. Have a good one. Bye, y'all.